uh, welcome back, Sister Gugu, and good morning. Good morning, saints of the living God. Allow me to take this time and opportunity to greet you all in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a blessing and honor once again to be at the feet of Jesus. We have made it through another day. Today is Thursday. And when we look back, there is no good or there is no good that we've done. We've made it through the mercies of God. Thus, we ought to be grateful to God this morning for his love and providence upon us. Because despite the fact that some of us are in the valley, but our God is the God of the valleys. This morning, let us sit together at the feet of Jesus as we consider the book of Matthew chapter 5. We will commence reading from verse 1 until verse 9. And I read in your hearing. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be showed mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Where we are this morning, we are on verse 9, where it reads, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, yesterday, as we were considering uh, verses 6, we, we were on blessed are those uh, who are merciful, for they will be showed mercy. We would remember that we were on practical theology where we ought to give to the community and actually have an impact where we are living. Today, we are looking at blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be children of God. Now, when we look at the work of peace, that's what we're saying today. We're saying that the work of a peace of peacemakers is blessed work. Before men can actually make peace among others, they must be of peace spirits themselves. Because you cannot go out to people and make peace among them when you yourself do not have peace. Before you are a promoter of peace, you must be lovers of peace. You know, there are people who, ju who just do not appreciate a peaceful environment. Wherever they are, there is always conflict amongst them. Christians must be peaceful minded. A person who calls themselves a disciple of Christ must have a mind that is peaceful. The peaceable, peaceableness of the spirit is the beauty of a saint. When a person or a disciple of Christ, when you look at them and you see that this person carries in themselves a spirit of peace, in them you see an attribute of a disciple. In them you see an attribute of one who has had an encounter with Christ. Allow me therefore this morning to look at peace in two folds. I will look at peace uh, in the aspect of peace in our homes, in the aspect of peace in our families. 
the bond of peace. Peace is a belt that binds our families together. It is a golden clasp which knits them together so that they do not fall into pieces. It should be our endeavor that in our families there is peace at all times. The second piece that I want to look at, it is the ecclesiastical piece or the church piece, the piece that we find within our congregation. The church should be a place of peace. The church today is falling apart because people do not have peace. Now allow me to pose a question to you this morning. Is the church today in conflict because of you? Is the church today disintegrated because you have no respect for God and his people? Are there people who have decided to leave the church today because of you? Oh friends, this morning, allow me to pose a question that is your family disintegrated because of you. Where you are is the conflict because of your presence. Oh, friends, that is not a character of a disciple or a follower of Christ. Because where there is a disciple of Christ, there is peace at all times. Those who are at the feet of Jesus are called to peace. God never called any man to division. Thus, even when Paul writes to the churches, he would use the phrase, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reason why we should not be given to strife because we have no call for it. Our call is to peace. God has called us to peace. Oh, friends, allow me to submit this morning that it is the nature of grace to change the heart and make it to be at peace. By nature, we in our human nature, we are fierce. We, 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 we dispose fierce uh, uh, and cruel disposition. However, those who are at the feet of Jesus have been transformed by grace to be able to deposit a change of heart that is filled with peace in them. The heart of man naturally lies under the curse, the curse that brings nothing but the thistles of strife and contention. But when grace comes into the heart, it makes it peaceable. It infuses a sweet, loving disposition. Grace turns the vulture that is in me into a dove. Grace is able to change a lion-like fierceness into a lamb-like gentleness. Those who have been at the feet of Jesus, like the book of Isaiah, it is like the wolf and the lamb living together. And there is no one who wants to harm another because they have been at the feet of Jesus. They have felt the touch of the Messiah. They have been transformed by Christ. And therefore, in their presence, there is always love in their presence. There is always peace because Christ has been with them. However, however, I want to submit this morning that it should never be a point whereby we sell. We, it should never be a point whereby we buy the truth and sell it out. Allow me to submit to you that peace must not be bought with the sale of truth. Yes, we are followers of Christ. Yes, 
even should at times in our presence, there should always be peace in our presence, but it should never be at the expense of truth because truth is the ground of faith and the rule of life. Truth is a charge that God has entrusted us with. And allow me to remind you that you won't be popular because of truth, because those who are truthful, because those who call sin by its word, those who call wrong by wrong, they are not popular, they are not loved, they are not accepted in this world. They are at times not accepted even in the church of God, but there should never be a time where we sell truth. Truth remains truth, no matter heavens may fall, but we always abide with the truth. Thus, Luther will say, heaven may fall. However, truth should remain truth. Even if one crumb of truth, we should never even avoid one trump of truth perishing. Oh, allow me to say to you, to be of a peaceful, to be of peaceful spirit, it brings along with you peace wherever you go. Because when you have peace, it makes you to have a heart that is a peace, whereby you are able to release the heaviness you are carrying within your heart so that you do not find yourself tormenting yourself of the things that people have done to you. A person who is not a peace, who is not at peace, is like a troubled sea, fighting against self, having no direction in life because they are filled with so much bitterness in them. Angry people do not enjoy what they possess. When you are angry, you do not enjoy what you have. You are always filled with this rage. You are always filled with this rage where you always want to have, you want, always want uh, to revenge yourself. But when you have peace in you, you sleep peacefully even at night, knowing that you are comforted. You are sleeping comfortably in the hands of the master. When you are at peace, you are able to sleep and have a life that is comfortable, for you know that your heart is at peace. Despite the calamities, despite the adversities that are surrounding you, but when you are at peace with self, you know you feel content and know that there is nothing that can harm your peace, for you are in control of your own feelings, not someone else controlling you, how you feel. Oh, allow me to submit to you this morning that people should not control us. Let us not allow our lives to be in the hands of other people. Let us allow God to control our lives. Let us be in control of our lives where our emotions are not controlled by other people, but our emotions are controlled by the will of God. Our emotions are controlled by what the Lord says to us, by what God requires of us. Oh, allow me to submit to you this morning that God, our Father, the creator of the universe, is the God of peace because mercy and peace surround his throne. He signs the articles of peace and sends the ambassadors of peace to publish them. He sends us as the ambassadors of peace to go and publish the articles of peace. Allow me to submit to you this morning that the son of God is called the prince of peace. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. The name of peace, the God who takes the human form in order to restore the relationship to mediate on behalf of humanity and to restore the relationship of God with men and also to restore the relationship of man to man. Oh, allow me to say to you, Christ prayed for peace. I pray that they may be in one mind and with one heart. They may be one as I and 
the Father are one. Allow me to submit to you that the Holy Spirit, oh, the Holy Spirit is also the spirit of peace because he is the comforter. He is the one who comes when there is conflict and he brings about peace amongst the people of God. And therefore, allow me to submit to you that we follow a God of peace. We follow a God who loves peace and unity among his people. It should be our daily endeavor. It should be our endeavor as followers, as disciples of Christ, that we seek peace at all times, that at all times in our presence, there is laughter. At all times in our presence, there is happiness because out of the call of bitterness, it is impossible to bring forth a sweet presence of the spirit of peacefulness. And therefore, allow me to submit to you this morning that blessed are the peaceful, uh, uh, blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God, because it is only the evil one who has no peace in them. It is only the evil one who likes conflict, but Christ is the God of peace. And therefore, blessed are those who are peacemakers, for thy shall be called children of God. Yes, we will be children of God when we are peacemakers, but when we act contrary to peace, therefore we deny the power of God in our lives, and we are not followers of a living God. Allow me to submit to you, therefore, this morning, that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. May the good Lord bless you. Let us pray. Our loving and kind uh, Father who art in heaven, be a father who comes difficult. At times, dear Lord, the bitterness in us tends to override the peace. Oh Lord, help us. Empower us through your Holy Spirit that we live a life of peace. Where we are, there should be peace at all times. Oh, above all, dear Father, this morning, forgive us. Forgive us for the people who left the church because of us. Forgive us, dear Lord, for the disintegration that we've caused in our families. Forgive us, Lord, for the curses that we've said against other people. Forgive us, dear Father. We never meant to do so. This morning you have reminded us that you, as the creator of the universe, you are the God of peace. You have reminded us this morning that you died on the cross in order to restore peace with humanity. For you, dear Lord, you never just prayed for peace but you also bled for peace. Oh Lord, may that blood that was shed on Calvary cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. May it reunite us with you. May it also reunite us with our fellow brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.